Marty Jackley Martin J. Jackley, born October 13, 1970, is an American attorney who was the 30th Attorney General of South Dakota from 2009 to 2019. He previously served as the 39th United States Attorney for the District of South Dakota. He ran unsuccessfully for Governor of South Dakota in 2018, losing to Christy Nome. Early Life and Education Jackley was raised in Sturdy's, South Dakota, and graduated from Sturdy's Brown High School in 1988. He graduated cum laude from the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology in 1992 with his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. He earned his Juris Doctor from the University of South Dakota School of Law in 1995. Legal Career From 1995 through 1997, Jackley served as a judicial law clerk for the then former Chief Judge Richard Batty of the United States District Court for the District of South Dakota. Jackley joined the Rapid City law firm of Gunderson, Palmer, Nelson, and Ashmore. As a partner, his practice areas focused on construction and engineering law and real property disputes. At that time, he also served as a Special Assistant Attorney General for South Dakota prosecuting controlled substance felonies. United States Attorney 2006-2009 in 2006, Jackley was recommended by U.S. Senator John Thune to replace James E. McMahon and later nominated by President George W. Bush to be United States Attorney for the District of South Dakota. Jackley was unanimously confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Marty was named the South Dakota Prosecutor of the Year in 2008 from the South Dakota State's Attorneys Association. Jackley was succeeded as U.S. Attorney by Brendan Johnson. Attorney General of South Dakota 2009-2019 Jackley won re-election in 2010 and in 2014. Tenure Eat Beeminus 5 Scandal Eat Beeminus 5 was a national investor visa program which granted green cards to aliens and their families who have invested $500,000 in approved but not guaranteed investments. South Dakota and Vermont were the only states that managed the B-5 funds through a state-controlled entity. On October 20, 2013, Richard Benda died from a gunshot wound. Approximately a month and a half later, Jack Lee stated that the death was a suicide. Initially, it was questioned how a man could kill oneself with a shotgun. Then, an updated attorney general's report said, that a stick was used without explanation. Pinto had served as Governor Mike Round's Director of Economic Development. Nearly three years after Bendy's death, Jack Lee charged Duke Ballin relating to the E.B. Minus 5 scandal with five felony counts of unauthorized disposal of personal property to security interest. In February 2017, Ballin pleaded guilty to one count of the little-known crime of unauthorized disposal of personal property subject to a security interest and was sentenced to a $2,000 fine and two years of probation. Gear Up Scandal On September 17, 2015, Scott Westerhuis shot his four children, his wife Nicole, and then set his house on fire before killing himself. Westerhuis was the business manager of Mid Central Educational Cooperative. Hours before the Wester Hueys home was found burning, Mid Central Educational Cooperative, where Scott Wester Hueys was the business manager, had lost a multi million dollar state contract. The decision by the state came after a series of financial problems turned up in audits of the business that administered a program that encourages Native American students to go to college called Gear Up. Nearly three years later, in June 2018, Jack Lee lost the first of three possible gear-up cases, as the jury acquitted Stephanie Hubers was found not guilty of grand theft, grand theft by deception and alternative receiving stolen property charges. In September 2018, Jack Lee made a plea deal with Dan Garrick, the former educational cooperative director, wherein Garrick pled guilty to one felony count of falsifying evidence.
Carrick had originally been charged with six felony counts alleging that he falsified evidence and conspired to offer forged or fraudulent evidence. In October 2018, Jackley lost his second gear, up jury trial when the jury acquitted Stacey Phelps, the former CEO of the American Institute for Innovation, on all charges. Supported SB 70, Adult Criminal Justice Reform Law 2013. On January 18, 2013, Jackley testified before the Senate State Affairs Committee in support of SB 70. On February 6, 2013, Governor Dennis Daugard signed SB 70 into law. The bill has been heavily criticized by law enforcement and public officials as being detrimental to public safety. Supported SB 73 Juvenile Criminal Justice Reform Law 2015. On January 23, 2015, Jack Lee testified before the Senate State Affairs Committee in support of SB 73. On March 13, 2015, Governor Dennis Daugard signed SB 73 into law. Annette Bosworth case. On Wednesday, June 4, 2014, one day after the losing the U.S. Senate primary, Annette Bosworth was arrested on charges brought by Jack Lee regarding perjury and filing false documents. Bosworth called the charges a political intimidation scheme against her by Jack Lee, who was appointed by then-Governor and now U.S. Senate nominee Mike Rounds, who just defeated Bosworth the day prior. Many questioned why a plea deal could not be struck. Bosworth stated there is no deal that will take away any of the felonies, so of course it's going to trial. Paul Jacobs, a blogger who says he had experience with an overly aggressive prosecutor in Oklahoma over election issues several years ago, Jacobs says Jackley's prosecution looks more like persecution, a line Bosworth repeats in her link to it. Bosworth claimed that Jackley was prosecuting her for political and personal reasons. On May 27, 2015, Annette Bosworth was convicted by a jury trial of six felonies for perjury and six felonies for filing false documents. On July 19, 2017, the South Dakota Supreme Court vacated the six convictions for perjury, but affirmed the remaining convictions. On November 3, 2017, Judge John Brown granted Bosworth a suspended imposition of sentence, which means she no longer has any felonies on her record. Flandreau Marijuana Case On August 3, 2016, Jack Lee filed three charges against Eric Hagen regarding conspiracy to possess, possession, and attempt to possess more than 10 pounds of marijuana. On May 24, 2017, a jury acquitted Hagen of all charges. The verdict was seen as a setback for Jack Lee while he was running for governor. Failed nominee to Board of Pardons and Paroles over Sexual Harassment Allegations On October 23, 2017, Jack Lee appointed Jean Abdallah to the Board of Pardons and Paroles. On November 28, 2017, a former lobbyist, Tiffany Campbell, accused Abdallah of sexual harassment when he was in the legislature. An appointment to the Board of Pardons and Parole must be confirmed by the State Senate on January 16, 2018. Abdallah withdrew from the Board of Pardons and Parole after report of sexual harassment. Laura Zilstra Sexual Harassment Retaliation Lawsuit In 2011, Division of Criminal Investigation DCIN Agency controlled by Jack Lee Agent Laura Zilstra filed a sexual harassment claim against a former Brown County deputy who made inappropriate comments towards her. Zilstra was then demoted and transferred from Aberdeen to Pierre. She then resigned in 2012. In September 2015, former Division of Criminal Investigation DCI agent Laura Zilstra sued DCI Director Brian Gortmaker claiming she had been retaliated against with response to sexual harassment. In December 2017, the jury awarded Zilstra $1.02 million in damages, finding that she had suffered retaliation and discrimination. Zilstra thanked the jury for giving me justice. She had alleged violations of the Civil Rights Act and the South Dakota Human Relations Act. In May 2018, Federal District Court Judge Charles Corneman ordered DCI Director 
Brian Gortmaker, to appear in court as the state failed to pay the $1.05 Sensum settlement. Jackley claimed that the settlement was not being delayed, and that Zilstra's lawyers and his gubernatorial opponent Christy Nome were playing politics. Zilstra disputed in detail that there was a delay in the payments and personally appeared in campaign at stating, I don't think Marty Jackley should be governor. I don't think he should be the attorney general. 2018 gubernatorial election. Candidates. In November 2016, Jackley declared his intention to seek the Republican nomination for governor of South Dakota. Congresswoman Christy Nome also declared that she would seek the Republican nomination for governor. Carrie LaFleur and Laura Hubel also declared their intention to seek the Republican nomination for governor. However, LaFleur and Hubel were unable to obtain the required number of signatures to make the primary ballot. Debates Jackley and Nome participated in three debates. First debate in the first debate, both candidates tried to define the other. Jack Lee stated, It's Washington experience versus South Dakota experience. Marty's background has been being a government lawyer, Nome said. Second debate. In the second debate, Nome discussed Marty's scandals. In EB5, the state oversight program, nobody went to jail. On Gear Up, still nobody's been punished. When we talk about what's been going on in Brookings with the global aquaponics Tamacon artist, Tobias Reitzman held a fundraiser for Marty Jackley. Marty attended his phony groundbreaking for his phony project, Noam says. People lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Still, nobody's been investigated and nobody's been prosecuted. That needs to change in our state. Jackley was on the defensive during the second debate. Congresswoman, he didn't hold a fundraiser for me. I was at an event that he was at, and I did go to a groundbreaking because that's what important in South Dakota, Jackley says. When we have businesses expanding, I think it's important that we attend those. You talk about gear up. There hasn't been a sentencing because these defendants are presumed innocent. But I, as Attorney General, unlike Washington, have done something about it. I actually formed a grand jury. Indictments have been issued. They are scheduled to begin jury trial. Final debate. In the final debate, Jack Lee and Noam took tough questions about workforce development, anti-discrimination laws, drugs uniting Democrats and Republicans in the state to make critical decisions and much more. While they spent a lot of time talking about their plans for the state, they also spent a lot of time attacking each other's records. A major topic of contention you might not expect. Boards and commissions. The state currently has 134 of them. Noam says she wants to streamline different processes for Leicester eliminating red tape, but Jack Lee disagrees. Every time that a proposal comes forward to create a new blue ribbon task force, a board or a commission, what typically comes with that is another layer of bureaucracy, Noam said. Jack Lee defended the government bureaucracy. We need a governor that understands that various different boards isn't out there criticizing different boards and saying that type of service isn't important, Jack Lee said. Jack Lee spoke about putting together a task force to work on government transparency and open records laws. I'm committed when I become governor to put forth a task force because we need to take a look at the open records law, he said. They both ended the debate with another jab at one another. It really comes to down to Washington experience versus South Dakota experience, Jack Lee said. The congresswoman has been spending considerable time and effort talking about Marty Jack Lee. But I'm talking about you. South Dakota days ago, he stood up and talked about protecting victims while behind the scenes he was actively working to silence one to further his political career, Noam said. You deserve a governor who will be honest with you, who will tell you the truth and who is willing to be accountable. Primary Results Jack Lee lost in the June primary to U.S. Representative Christy Noam. Jack Lee only won seven of South Dakota's 66 counties. Jack Lee received 45,069.44%, 
1.5% votes and Nome received 57,437 56% votes. Post-Attorney General Career After the election, Jack Lee rejoined the firm of Gunderson, Palmer, Nelson, and Ashmore, and opened up a law office in Pierre, South Dakota. On August 27, 2019, Marty was sworn in as the Jones County State's Attorney. Initiated Measure 24 In 2017, an initiated measure was started to ban financial contributions from out-of-state residents, political committees, and entities to ballot question committees. On June 14, 2017, the Legislative Research Council proposed edits to the initiated measure. On July 31, 2017, Jackley, while serving as Attorney General, submitted his Attorney General's explanation regarding IM-24 to the Secretary of State pursuant to SDCL 12 minus 13 minus 25.1. IM-24 passed with 174,960 55.52% votes for the initiated measure and 140,000 172 44.48% votes against it. On March 4, 2019, South Dakota Voice, a grassroots ballot question committee, headed by Corey Hadelberger, filed a lawsuit to stop IM-24. On April 17, 2019, a complaint was filed against the state to invalidate IM-24 by Jack Lee approximately six weeks after initial lawsuit by Hadelberger and despite having written the Attorney General explanation for the state. On May 9, 2019, Federal Judge Charles Cornman struck down IM-24. South Dakota Voice was awarded attorney fees from the state in the amount of $32,100, expenses in the amount of $1083.90, and costs in the amount of $505.40. Jack Lee was awarded attorney fees for his clients nearly three times of South Dakota Voice in the amount of $79,640, despite starting six weeks after the South Dakota Voice complaint. Representation of T. Denny Sanford regarding child pornography allegations In 2020, it was reported that T. Denny Sanford, the richest man in South Dakota, was being investigated for possession of child pornography. Sanford was represented by Jack Lee. Investigators obtained a search warrant before referring the case to the United States Department of Justice. The investigation has led several institutions towards reconsideration of his philanthropy. 2022 Attorney General Election On March 1, 2021, Jack Lee announced that he would run for Attorney General in the 2022 elections. Personal Life Marty lives in Pierre, South Dakota, with his two children Michael and Isabella. On October 18, 2019, Marty and Angela were divorced citing irreconcilable differences. Electoral History